Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. At that time, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. And at the end of the gospel, we heard, Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. From the life of St. Anthony of the Desert, and if you've not read that life, I recommend reading it by St. Athanasius. Very good life. One of the first of the saint lives. It's excellent. So from the life of St. Anthony of the Desert, we find an amazing episode where two arrogant, worldly, wicked, and jealous philosophers tried to overcome the saint. They looked down on him as a simpleton. Unable to get the better of him in discussion, he decided to turn to the occult, the powers of hell of which they were experienced. In seeking to injure the holy man, or at least to drive him from his cell, by illusions of magic and devices of demons, they dispatched against him most foul spirits. And when these savage demons did not even venture to approach him as he was now signing his breast and forehead with the sign of the cross and now devoting himself to prayer and supplication, they returned without any result to those who had directed them. And these occultists then sent against St. Anthony other demons from down deeper in hell, more desperate in wickedness than the previous ones. And when these two had spent their strength in vain and returned without having accomplished anything, still others more powerful from deeper down, were sent against the victorious soldier of Christ and could prevail nothing against him. Each of these great devices of magic only proved the sanctity of the desert father, not even being able to draw him forth from his cell for a single instant. In their astonishment, These philosophers, these wicked occultists, came straight to St. Anthony and disclosed the extent of their attacks and their plots. They confessed their jealousy and asked that they might forthwith be made Christians. Baptize us. You're on the right side. We're on the wrong side. But when he asked of them the day of the assault, the time, He declared that at that time he had been afflicted with the most bitter pangs of thought. But that was all. Bad thoughts. Thus, the Desert Fathers conclude from this and many other similar experiences that demons cannot easily find an entrance into the mind, the heart, the body, could argue even the home, the family of anyone. Nor have they the power of overwhelming the soul of anyone, they say, unless they have first deprived it of all holy thoughts, made it empty and free from spiritual meditations, taken away its piety and its devotions. So reports St. John Cassian in his excellent work, The Conferences. Now this historical event shows the power of our Lord's victory over Satan's temptations in the desert. That's how Anthony was successful. It was through the cross. It was through our Lord. There are at least four main lessons that can be learned from St. Anthony's experience in connection to this gospel today, what our Lord went through in the desert. The first one, good men will be tempted. Good men will be tempted and even tempted severely at times to prove their virtue and make them even more virtuous, to put them on display for others, such that those others, as it were, are forced to convert, just like those wicked men. If then you are baptized and are going out into the desert of Lent with some seriousness, manliness, and I hope you are, Get ready for temptation. This is the path of the saints. 
This is why we have His Majesty's temptations on the first Sunday of Lent. So the first lesson is simply this. We should not be surprised at temptation. And if we're not being tempted, something's wrong. It's an important part of our life as virtuous Catholics. We're big game. He's after us. Thus, temptations are inescapable. First lesson. Second lesson. The occult and the so-called magic is not as powerful as many seem to think. Modern man is now in the shoes of the smug and self-important philosophers looking down on St. Anthony. They think they know everything, these enlightened men of our day. And surely there are some today seeking to control even the forces of demons, who, by the way, who, were, who was really in charge, those philosopher occultists or the demons? The demons. They were just using them to damn as many souls as possible, including them. Now, these wicked men are directing all their efforts at the church and our most faithful soldiers, those who have the faith, those that are like St. Anthony. Yet the holy man, Anthony, overcame three waves of a demonic attack from three levels of hell. He was immobile before them. It's a sign of the church. It's being built on rock. We learn from this, there's no dualism. This is extremely important in our time. There is no dualism in God's creation. There's no yin and yang nonsense in this world. There's no good force and dark force in that nonsense, evil, wicked George Lucas films. Don't think you can watch those and not sin. They're dangerous. You're putting junk into your soul that is contrary to God and his creation. Those dark devilish forces hit a brick wall with St. Anthony. Just as the master devil, Satan himself, fell before his majesty and had to flee to the deepest pit of hell at his command. To be gone, Satan. No, there's no dualism. There's no tapping into the light force and the dark force. Only dominion of Christ the King. Unfortunately, today, more than ever, there has been a proliferation of a cult in our world. Proliferation almost seems an understatement. Never before have so many books, movies. I doubt a single Disney movie is exempt from this. Even the older ones, you can find embedded art. Disney is notorious for occult content. More than ever, there is a proliferation. Never before has so many books, movies, games with occult content been available to so many people. Many are experimenting with the occult, oftentimes out of boredom or adventure or out of imitation. Once I was in a catechism class in a small town, and I asked the children, how many here have played at the Ouija board? Only one didn't raise her hand. All of them had played with a Ouija board. How many here have played with a Ouija board? The occult is in our midst. People are experimenting, or they're imitating somebody else. They read some book. Or even through scientific inquiry, what's the result? They are opening doors. This is so important to understand. They are opening doors to the hellish fiends below. For those with eyes to see, it seems that hell has nearly been raised to the surface of the earth. We're swimming and drowning in occult-based ideas. Add on to this how many at this time are sinning more and more openly and boldly with little constraining them. It seems we are no longer slouching toward Gomorrah. We have arrived quite a while ago. What does all this mean? Simply this. We do not have a devil problem as so much as we have a people problem. People, by their delving into the arcane, the occult, the secret forces of the devils, are voluntarily opening doors to hell. 
so that the demons can come out. They're being invited to come upstairs. Please understand this. The doorknob is on our side, not theirs. We're the ones opening the door. Never forget this principle. Devils cannot do anything without the permission from God. That's it. Listen to St. Thomas Aquinas. He says, it is not in the devil's power to tempt as much as he wills, but only as much as God permits. Hence, he says, be gone, as though he were to say, I do not allow you to tempt me further. Thank you, St. Thomas. So if man invites spirits to come up, God will permit them to teach that man a lesson or society in general. These are hard lessons to learn. Another anecdote. I know some exorcists. They told me there was a, a lady who was actually in Detroit. Michael Jackson had died. She had a picture of Michael Jackson. She put a candle in front of him. She loved him so much. A demon came right out of the picture and possessed her. Many people have been possessed through Harry Potter. This stuff is all around us. These are hard lessons to learn. Venerable Mother Mary of Agreda adds on to St. Thomas. It is also certain that ordinarily the demons have no power over souls unless they gain entrance by some venial or mortal fault. Mortal sin, key point, mortal sin gives them a sort of direct right over those who commit it. Well, venial sin weakens the strength of the soul and invites their attacks. Thank you, Mother Mary of Agreda. Thus, the devils, being a great sinners themselves, are permitted to come to the surface by attraction. Not only by invitation, but by attraction. Like seeks like. Wicked acts attract wicked companions. Fallen angels, in other words. So our second lesson People provide power to the devils by their evil choices and behavior. The more Christianity is rejected, the more hell will come up to the surface of the earth by man's invitations and wicked actions. Until that is, man is forced to return to God and his church for help. And I dare say that's going to happen. And it's, we know the name of that time. It's called the three days of darkness. That's when the devils are going to have free reign and they're going to come. Third lesson, St. Anthony, he knew his faith. He knew his catechism. He did not need to be a philosopher to overcome the prideful, enlightened men of his day. His piety overpowered their prideful learning. No, he studied and prayed and meditated. Because of this, his soul was well defended in the attack. This clearly flows from our Lord's temptations in the desert because His Majesty used divine revelation each time to defeat the devil. And St. Peter teaches us, sanctify the Lord Christ in your hearts, being ready always to satisfy everyone that asketh you a reason of that hope that is in you. Thank you, St. Peter. Now, the same is true of being tempted. We should have a reason Ready. Why? The temptation is not for us. This is against that virtue. This will be a bad example for others. This is against my vows of baptism. This is against my marriage vows. This will hurt my spouse. This will hurt my family. This will hurt my parish. This will cause a scandal. This is not pleasing to God. Be gone, Satan. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Mary Immaculate Conception, St. Joseph, Terror of Demons, go to the foot of the cross and then say, Hail Mary. And it will work. You'll defeat the devil every time. And when St. John of the Cross had to ex exercise demons, and he did a number of times, he spent much more time catechizing the person than he did praying the ritual. In his youth, Blessed Bartolo de Longo became a spiritualist. He had a sort of he was a sort of medium with a spirit guide, a demon hanging around him, who would answer his questions and those of others. How is he freed from this demon? General confession and learning his catechism. No exorcism was needed. 
Thus, once again, the Desert Fathers rightly concluded, demons cannot easily find an entrance into the mind, the heart, the body. We can add on the family, the house, the home of anyone. Nor have they the power of overwhelming the soul of anyone, unless they have first deprived it of all holy thoughts and made it empty and free from spiritual meditation. And we might add piety. That is not too difficult to do in our media-drenched world. Third lesson, then, is this. Concerned about the rising tide of hell's influence in these times? Then learn your faith through and through and avoid exposing your soul to dangerous ideas. By doing this, you will be like St. Anthony, immobile to the machinations, temptations, and false promises of the devil. Instead, you will piously lean on the promises of Christ, of which Our Lady will make you worthy. Fourth and final lesson. Notice how St. Anthony defeated the devil simply by remaining in his cell, which for the desert monks symbolized their duties of their state in life. He went about being a true monk. He was praying and meditating, making the sign of the cross. At other times, he would give instructions or he would make reed mats, all in keeping to his cave or cell. The devil could not break through this barrier. In confronting the chief demon in the desert, his majesty did not give way to any of the temptations because none of them fit his duties of a state in life. What was his duty? To bring glory to God, to save mankind. But notice something. Sooner or later, his majesty did, in fulfilling his duties, turn stones into bread at the feeding of the 5,000. And he still does in the Eucharist and the stone of this altar, you are fed as everyone else is throughout the world that goes to Mass. He did work fantastic wonders in raising men from the dead and curing those that were deaf and dumb or born blind. And he did gain the whole world through the cross, all for the glory of God and the salvation of souls. In this way, it is clearly shown to us when we keep to our duties, we will receive the graces to do all things necessary to bring glory to God, save our own souls and those of others, and even gain the whole world in due time. Thus, the philosophers fell down before Anthony, begging for forgiveness and conversion. Our fourth lesson, then, is keep to your duties of your state and life, and you will be more and more protected and immune from diabolical attacks, even when they come from the deepest levels of hell. Now, humor me a little more today as we try to sum up all that we've learned with an analogy. As many saints and doctors, including St. Francis of Assisi, St. Anthony of Padua, have noted The devil is God's policeman. He is God's sheriff and his jailer. This police force of God is truly massive and has a database that is accurate and well-maintained, making our world a sort of police state until Christ comes again. And he's going to lock him up in the jail forever. Thus, we can be assured that one of these policemen has his sights on us. He has his radar gun directed right upon us. Perhaps someone, an occultist, in other words, has called us in and complained about us like those false philosophers did to Anthony. Thus, a whole devilish guard is called out to surround us at times. They follow our every move. They see our identity. They call in for more information. Learning of our past actions, our sins, our faults and failings. Looking for any motive to move in for the attack. To arrest us and bring us down below. He watched that movie, they'll say, with all those scenes in it. He read that bad book. He played that evil game. He listened to that song. He said that bad joke. He hates this person. 
He disobeys his parents. He said those cruel, biting words. Treats his neighbor with disdain. And so on. He drank that substance. Then the policeman pulls in close behind. You know the feeling. Some of you do. The policeman pulls in close behind trying to fill us with fear. At times calling into the divine courtroom for permission to stop and search the victim. Becoming the accuser of the brethren. Apocalypse chapter 12. And you know what? Sometimes the court says yes. For God's glory, the salvation of souls, and to prepare us for judgment. To test us, to see if we will indeed keep God's holy commandments. Just like Job of old. To test us. And so the devil policemen move in to stop us and search us thoroughly by testing us and tempting us. But they have to flee like cowardly dogs when we are discovered to be keeping to our duties, following the law of God, knowing and practicing our faith, having an answer for the difficult and testing questions put to us, and having recourse to the Blessed Mother under whose wings the ark is contained. Under, under the wings of the angels. It's in the psalm today. It's in the offertory and the communion anaphon. Put yourself in that ark and you will be protected. Then something beautiful happens. Not only has the devil been used by God as an agent of reform. Making him serve an edifying goal, a pious goal, something he hates and despises. But even more wonderful, as St. Thomas teaches using today's gospel, men who conquer the devil merit the ministration of the good angels. Men who conquer the devil merit the ministration of the good angels. Don't you want that? May we all be saved souls together in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.